Chapter 45 Proceed, Wolf Boy 1, Tom said. Confront target and hold. Dr. Meyer Brandis gasped. Hold? she cried, adjusting her glasses, as if they could make her hear better. He should get in and get out as quickly as possible. Not this time, Tom replied. I'm going to give Mahmoud the shock of his life. I want to see him squirm. The doctors looked at each other. This is wrong, they thought. Very wrong. And it's getting worse. Wolfboy 1 acknowledged its instructions and implemented them. It calculated the force necessary to bridge the gap between the Crown Building and Trump Tower. Determining it needed a running start, it backed up to the appropriate distance. It targeted the right side of the building where it formed the shape of stairs. It selected an impact zone. When the target locked, it ran and leaped, soaring through the air. It spread its weight out when it landed. The glass cracked, but it didn't break. It clung to the windows, using its hand and toe claws, digging in just enough to support itself. It crawled across the glass to the ledge on the eastern side of the building that appeared part of a patio. People were standing outside, huddled together against the storm. They were drinking champagne and toasting the upcoming holiday. Wolfboy One climbed away from the patio, slipping into the shadows as two of them looked in its direction. Seeing nothing, they looked at each other and then at their drinks. They walked back to the group, laughing. Once Wolfboy One confirmed they were no longer interested, it turned and began to climb. Its virtual reality display mapped its route directly to the target's location. Mahmood was still at the table, lighting another cigarette. Wolfboy One climbed the building. When it reached Mahmood's window, it scanned for other occupants. Mahmood was alone. Enable high-intensity normal optical. Its eyes turned yellow. It leaned back and crashed through the glass, rolling as it hit the carpet. It came up on its feet, growling and gnashing its fangs. Mahmood gasped, dropped the cigarette, and dove for cover under the table. Chapter 46 In Colorado, Lieutenant Colonel Ryan stood outside of Ops with Darcy, Daniel, the Wolf Boys, and the Marines. It was child's play for Corny to disable the security system and cover their entry. The doctors and Tom were oblivious to anything until Lieutenant Colonel Ryan said, Hello, Tom. The colonel smiled, leveling his pistol. He sighted in on the director's forehead. The marines, in full gear and armed with their weapons, did the same. The wolf boys were in front of them, crouched to strike. They growled at the stunned individuals and ops. Make this easy, my friend, Lieutenant Colonel Ryan advised. Move your hands away from the controls and no one gets shot. Tom's expression grew cold. He drew his agency 9mm. Chapter 47 Jake dragged a dining room chair over to the front window and sat on it. He looked outside, worried. He thought Oliver's been gone way too long for a simple exam, and the complex isn't returning my calls. I've left seven messages on the automated phone service, and I'm about to leave seven more. I understand they have no obligation to keep me informed, but to take Oliver on his second day out and keep him so late? It's unprofessional. Ordinarily, Jake would hide his concern, but he was with Cody. Being with his friend made it easier to let it out. If Oliver's hurt in any way, someone's going to answer for it, and the agency can go hang. Cody wrapped the last of Oliver's Christmas presents, the delivery truck arrived a few hours after he left. He originally planned to wrap them while Oliver and Jake were in Chicago for the day, but Oliver's appointment made that unnecessary. Jake thought Cody might have overdone it a bit. We're living in the truck. How much room does he think Oliver has? Cody spared no expense. He bought Oliver everything he thought a 15-year-old boy would want. 
He started with a complete wardrobe of new clothes, sneakers, and ended with a gaming laptop, a gaming console, and every video game on the market. He bought a portable MP3 player with a gift card for a thousand songs. The presents were a mountain beneath the tree. They flowed out, leaving little room to walk through. Jake looked at them and shook his head. Problem? Cody asked, catching the expression. Jake turned around in the chair and rested his arms on the back. The true meaning of Christmas, huh? Extravagance? Hardly, Cody said, arranging the presents so the view was perfect. The spirit of giving, Jacob Marley Danziger. Are you having trouble with that concept? Henry, Jake replied. My middle name's... Oh, that Jacob Marley. Very funny. You're not laughing. Jake shook his head and rested his chin on his forearms. Can't, he replied, too worried to laugh. Cody thought, I'm worried too. It's already dark. This is extremely screwed up for a routine medical exam. Why aren't they answering the phones? Is that commonplace? If it is, it's bad. What if there was an emergency? How are we supposed to get in contact with the doctors? It was a moot point since Oliver wasn't with them. He felt Oliver would be back, only not before midnight. They also serve who sit and wait, Jake, Cody said, sipping his cognac. Jake stood up. I'm going to call again. Good idea. I'm going to have another drink. Chapter 48 On the monitors, Wolfboy 1 weaved from side to side. Target General Mohammed Ibn Mahmoud confirmed, proceed with sanction with extreme prejudice. It repeated that in five second intervals. Ops remained silent as Tom and Lieutenant Colonel Ryan glared at one another over their pistols. Whenever the colonel tried to advance, Tom brought up his 9mm and aimed it at his head. The Marines were ready to shoot, but Ryan ordered them to hold their fire. He wanted to take Tom alive and see him answer for all of this. Explain yourself, Colonel, Tom demanded, his expression furious. Who authorized you to be in here? This is a restricted area. Boys? Dr. Meyer Brandis asked, her voice shaky. Don't talk to them, Daniel snapped. Christ, Carolyn, Dr. McAllister cried. They're active. He tapped his keyboard, his face going ghostly white. Their cerebral partitions are down. Incredible, Dr. Wang nodded. Be quiet, Lieutenant Colonel Ryan barked. Hands off the keyboard, McAllister. Target General Mohammed Ibn. Stand by, Tom exclaimed, his face flushing. He glared at Darcy. She trained her pistol on him. And what are you doing, Dubois, you traitor? You're the traitor, Adam growled. Tom pointed his pistol right at him. I'll blow your head off first, boy. Corny slid in front of him. No, you won't. You're coming out of there, Granger, Lieutenant Colonel Ryan said. Nice and slow. Drop the sidearm. Fat chance, Tom replied. And I'll sanction every one of you sorry asses. I only need one wolf boy. The rest of you are gravy. The wolf boys growled. In Trump Tower, Mahmoud eased his way out from under the table and peeked around the side of the bed. His breath caught in his throat at the sight of his intruder. Demon, he hissed. Allah, preserve me. Wolf Boy One looked down at him, baring its fangs, its glowing yellow eyes narrow. Mahmoud moved back, easing himself onto the bed. He never took his eyes off the monster as he reached for his night table drawer. Wolf Boy One scanned it. Warning. Weapon detected. This unit is in danger. You hear that? Tom asked. Your buddy is going to die if you don't let me finish what I've started. Forget it, Lieutenant Colonel Ryan replied. Order him out of there. He looked at Dr. Meyer Brandis. Doctor? She shook her head. I can't. Tom has control of the system. The computer won't let me override his authority. 
Slowly, discreetly, she slipped her pistol out of the drawer. Dr. McAllister watched wide-eyed as she dropped it into her lab coat pocket. Mahmoud stuck his hand into the night table drawer and slipped his fingers around his pistol. Recommend enable ACOM, Wolfboy 1 stated with urgency. Action imperative. What's it going to be, Colonel? Tom asked. Mahmoud's going to kill the boy. The boys don't die that easily, the colonel shot back. Tom laughed. You haven't done your homework. Wolfboy 1. Classified targets, weapon, and ammunition. Wolfboy 1 replied, affirmative. Beretta 9-2 FS 9mm explosive tipped ammunition. The danger to this unit is extreme. Recommend enable ACOM. What about that? Tom asked. Those rounds will do a number on that kid, Ryan. The colonel strengthened his grip on his pistol. He dies. You die. Who are you speaking with, demon? Mahmoud asked, sighting in Wolfboy 1. Satan, perhaps? One minute. I will send you to him. He pulled the hammer back with a click. Tom slapped his hand down on a large red button on the console. The door to ops slammed shut. Corny and Adam reacted first, leaping at it, their claws at full extension. They grabbed onto the door, digging into the metal, ripping out chunks as they tried to tear their way through. Tom glared at Dr. Meyer Brandis. Activate the emergency sedation system, you stupid bitch, he cried. Dr. Meyer Brandis was startled, but she did what he ordered. In the hall, they heard a faint hissing sound. Daniel yelled, gas, and pulled his shirt up over his mouth. The Marines donned their gas masks. We have to get out of here, Lieutenant Colonel Ryan coughed, his eyes tearing. He already felt lightheaded. Another few seconds and he would be out. He grabbed Corny by the arm. No one moves against the complex without my orders. Yes, sir, Corny growled, dropping down off the door. Wolf boys, enable internal oxygen. Adam exclaimed, we'll never get through this door. Boys, Daniel coughed, stumbling. We need an exit. Corny? Adam asked. Omega wing. Corny knew what Adam meant. He felt it in his mind as though they were linked together. He felt Oliver, too. If he tried hard enough, he could see through Oliver's eyes. Mahmoud was bearing down on him, about to fire. Corny shook the image out of his head. He leaped over the top of the Marines to the Omega Wing access door. He concentrated, digital code scrolling across his corneas as he tapped into TCOS. He overrode the security. The door slid open. Adam charged past him. This way. The wolf boy scampered after him. The Marines followed, carrying the lifeless bodies of the Colonel, Daniel, and Darcy. Adam veered left toward the outer door. Corny, still in contact with the security system, ordered it to open. Simultaneously, he shut down the gas. As the door slid on its tracks, the security system compensated for the gas override. 30 caliber machine guns set in Omega Wing's walls at five foot intervals snapped into place, targeted them, and opened fire. The Marine carrying Darcy took a bullet in the back of the head. His brain exploded outward onto the man in front of him. His body sank to its knees and fell over. Darcy's unconscious form landed on top of him. The Marine to the front spun around, a shocked expression on his face as he spastically wiped at the gore on his back. Adam stopped short, computed the machine gun's firing pattern, and turned around. He weaved through the bullets, returning to aid them. He threw Darcy over his shoulder. Adam growled, Move it, Marine! They ran, dodging bullets until they were outside. They followed the others and disappeared into the dark wood line. Back in ops, Dr. McAllister frantically tried to block Corny's access to the security system. Oh my God, he cried. They're out. Their attention turned to the monitor. Mahmoud's face filled the screen. He was in front of Wolfboy 1, his pistol pressed against his forehead. 
Are you ready for hell, little demon? Mahmoud asked, his eyes wide. Holy, Tom cried. Enable ACOM! Affirmative, Wolfboy1 replied. ACON and Mohammed pulled the trigger. The 9mm exploded with a loud bang. The monitor went black. Out in the woods, the wolf boys howled in grief as Wolf Boy 1's presence from their uplink vanished. <laughs>